How's it going and welcome back to the Pokemon Unite video here on YouTube. Today we're coming back with some more Aegislash gameplay. While I don't think Aegislash is a character that's going to be at the tippy top of anyone's tier list anytime soon, it is a character that I think is reasonably competitive if you are playing it well, and I personally find it a ton of fun to play. Managing the differences between the stance switches once you hit your final stage at level 7, between your defensive mode that heals you and your offensive mode that chunks out for a lot more damage is a lot of fun when you're inside of a brawl. After playing with all the different combinations of movesets, Shadow Claw plus Iron Head is definitely my preferred configuration. Shadow Claw's engage is really consistent in what it does, and then Iron Head allows you to build boosted really nicely outside of combat when you're just moving around the map. For my item build, I just got classic double band plus buddy barrier along with slow smoke, so that way people can't get away from us when we're trying to run them down. For the gameplay today, I'm gonna be playing Aegislash in the bottom lane in some full solo queue matches. At any rate, I hope you enjoy, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Pokemon Unite highlight here on YouTube. I know, I find a lot of what people complain about in these games as far as teammates and rankings and stuff go, a lot of it's just a matter of perspective and people don't tend to not, just not have a very good one. It's like, sure, your teammates are gonna screw around, but like your opponents are also gonna screw around a little bit. Sorry, Pikachu, it's fine, you're gonna trickle. I'm gonna reset. Both the both the junglers came down early there because of how our lane played out. Lean lane. Oh, that's why everything feels like molasses. Look at my ping, chat. We're playing, uh, we're playing not in the United States. I was like, everything feels like, I was like, I keep feeling like I'm having input delay. This is not a good character to be playing when my ping sucks. <laughs> the micro on this character is so important. Oh, our Cinder just lost the 1v1 in the middle. I'm backing off. I ain't, I'm not taking that fight. Their jungler is top. Oh my gosh, that input delay got us there. <sighs> Playing on ping sucks. Bees are up. You missed that KO. All right, looks like our friends are coming down. Yes, I'm currently playing solo queue.
Oh no. Whew. Narrowly avoided disaster chat. All right, Venusaur cleaned that up too. Love it. All right, we'll let someone put their points in here who has a lot of them. Our jungler is going up through the mid, so we've been promoted to jungle, Aegislash. Slash. They lost top, but we did win the Dreadnought, so I'll take it, I think. One of the things you'll note that I'm doing is getting boosted more aggressively by using Iron Head every time it comes up. Every time you tap this Iron Head skill, you get that boosted count under my under my health. Which gives you that dash attack that you see me cutting through. Wants to fight, Zara? What are you doing, Venusaur? Don't get in trouble. I think all of our friends are about to die here. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Blastoise. That one's out because of the smoke. Oh, Blastoise actually got out. Good for you, bud. This game would be much easier if I didn't have really big input delay. We knocked, we knocked out a couple of them there and did some decent damage. You saw my shield stance go off when we started to get low, which allowed me to heal back up a good bit too, which is why I said this character is kind of tough to play when you've got molasses input delay. Because you, re you really need to be able to uh, switch modes efficiently. So she was a little bit late, but not too bad. Pikachu stole the Rotom. You love to see it. That's a Venusaur Unite that's pretty late. Top Tino should be coming back up here in a second, if my memory is correct. Be able to get to 13 before Zap is nice. Objective's the one in the middle. Oh, Cinderace and Pikachu just inted before Zap. Pikachu died with its Unite move. It's fine, I like a challenge.
Them are down. Okay, sick. That's actually kind of fun. I really like this character. I don't know that it's super good, but it's really fun to play. The the managing the micro of building your boosteds up and remembering to get those going and then switching modes between shield and sword when you're in combat based on what your health is, is really satisfying to do correctly. It was a little bit tough for me to do that game because our ping was bad, but I had fun. Damage numbers were mediocre. I felt like I was being kind of impactful in fights, but it's hard, it's hard to measure. So probably jungle guard or jungle dragonite for them. They only have one smoke on their team. We've got three on ours. Their team's pretty decent for Absol to be ganking into. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you to our friend. Get off of their point. Come on, you were playing so well. Why are you on their point? Our Elder Goss played so well getting me out and like now it's just gonna die. All right, all right, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. We don't need to take this fight, bud. Come on, we got it. We got a KO and we got the one in the middle. Maybe we didn't get the one ML, I don't know. We got a KO. So like either either way I'm feeling like we're we're up ish. And now it's gonna not be here for bees. Gosh. All right, all right, it got a knockout at least. We, tra we traded one for one. That was, uh... <sighs> We're not gonna have traded one for one because it's inting. You had Leaf Tornado, friend. Why didn't you just bail? Our El the Elder Goss has played well for engaging when we needed engage and has peeled well for me. It has not been good at getting out when the time has come to get out. It's overstayed basically every time. Let's gather at the bottom path. Oh my gosh, chat. It's just music to my ears. Gather bottom path hype. Perfect. The whole team was here for Dreadnought, chat. It's a Christmas miracle. All right, Absol's running straight up the middle to the other objectives, so we have been promoted to jungle Aegislash. I will say that Aegislash does feel okay because it's yet another character that like lanes okay early, but then also scales fine. So when this inevitably happened and your jungler decides it doesn't want to be your jungler anymore, you can go get the farm in the center path.
low key kind of a really interesting one on one there. Like managing which boostage were going when based like that fight there with that Dragonite, I feel like really highlights why I've been enjoying playing this character, even if it's not the best character in the game. Like the, the I don't know if you, you all were watching how I was positioning my cooldowns in order there, but there was, there was a lot of management on my end of whether or not I was in sword mode or shield mode. Have you decided you would like a jungle buff, Absol? Are right, we gonna do top dinos here and just get big? The comparison of this character to a fighting game is a really good one that I hadn't thought about before, but it super fits. Feels like a feels like a really apt comparison. So you'll notice that I completely ignored the Rotom top here. And that was that was intentional. This Rotom doesn't have a ton of value for us. The points are kind of whatever, and we're far enough away from Zap spawning that we can easily push this off of our base if they if they secure it. Now, the one downside to me not going to this was that would have been a decent time to pull the trigger on my Unite, which I can now not do. That being said, what you're currently witnessing here is another one of the reasons why I basically never secure Rotoms in solo queue matches. So many people in Pokemon Unite are completely unable to help themselves from running head first into the opposing team's second point and dying, getting knocked out. Like, the, the reason why they ran in there like that was because they felt like they had the road time and they needed to. down for the first few seconds of Zap. Our Lucario is literally on the Dreadnought instead of helping us in the team fight. The opposing team got the Dreadnought right before Zap came up. If the Lucario had been team fighting instead of fighting the Dreadnought, we'd probably win that. Oh, that was uh, enemy Blastoise. Yikes. All right, there's Pikachu. Clean up, friend. I believe in you. Oh, gosh, there's Sylvia. I made it out of a sliver, and then it got its Unite move off. Oof. Oof. Big oof. Good job, friends. Ah, 
I think we actually lost yet. Maybe I should have just gone back to defend. I think I think we lost. I didn't see how many points we put in, but they definitely put in a hundred. Thanks, Kyle. I mean, to be fair, a lot of what I do is not particularly fancy. Just like base good level stuff that you should be doing. I think we lost. I should have I should have gone back to I should not have tried to score after Zapdos. Alright, we got away with it. You can't keep getting away with it. The team the team fight at the end there was really chaotic and kind of bad, but. Honestly, the fact that the team fighting was so chaotic probably benefited us a little bit because someone was asking about Absol earlier. Um, Absol really benefits from a non-traditional 5v5. Like Absol's, Absol's good at like picking up the scraps and that, that end game uh, positioning there was basically all scraps all the way down. It's the end. You watch the whole thing. Smash that like button, ring that bell, leave a comment, all those YouTuber things if you enjoyed it. And you got to the end, which means you either enjoyed it or you're possibly asleep at your keyboard, which if you're asleep, wake up and hit the like button anyways. Thanks for watching and I'll be back tomorrow with another highlight here on YouTube.